You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. So we've been in the yard for 14 straight days, working sun up to sun down. So far, we've managed to remove the decals, sand off 90% of the bottom paint that was caked on and not applied properly to the boat, fiberglassed over all the unnecessary through holes, and patched the hole in the side of the boat, which turned out to be a lot bigger than it had originally appeared. It already feels like we've been here an eternity and we still have a long way to go. We're sore, we're tired, and you could probably count our remaining brain cells on one hand. But time is money in the boatyard, so we gotta keep trucking. Yeah! So we just dropped the rudder, and I can't for the life of me call this thing by the right name. Yeah. She is gonna drop the keel. Rudder. Is it the rudder? Yeah, that's the rudder. <laughs> <laughs> we just dropped this keel. That's a no, nice that's a, keel, boy. That's a, it's a rudder. Okay, on the post I did earlier, I called this a keel, and it is actually a rudder. You don't know how many sailing nerds have commented on my sh to correct me. Cut it out. We need to take some measurements, send in the circumference and diameter to the keel place. Rudder! <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna get some new keel bearings in here. Shut up! <laughs> As you can see, sailing terminology is not my strong suit. But one thing I do know is that a keel looks like a rudder and a rudder looks like a keel and they both hang off the bottom of the boat. But after Sasha correcting me non-stop, I figured I better come up with a way to tell the difference between the two. So I looked at the boat through the eyes of an anatomy professor and I said, if that keel was on a person's body, what body part would that be? Damn, that's a nice keel. Look at that thing, boy. Woo, she's pretty. It's a counterweight, and the more I thought about it, the more it just made sense. Oh my God, babe, is he comparing a woman's? You see, some girls clearly have a full keel, and this provides them with more strength to survive groundings, and it gives them more comfort and stability when underway. Then other girls kind of have that teardrop shape, and these are referred to as bulb fin keels. There's a little more counterweight there than what meets the eye. Turn it off, turn it off. Typically, they're more agile and outperform a full keel on every point of sail. And if you want even more agility, then you're gonna wanna go with a straight fin keel. But they're typically not the best for long-term cruising. <laughs> well, now we can all remember the difference between a keel and a rudder. Which reminds me that we have not yet told you about our online merch store. And for the grand reveal, I figured I'd throw up a couple new items to complement our little anatomy lesson. But let's just keep that between us because someone special just got back to the boat and she doesn't know. It's me, and I brought back with me our custom spirit animal hats. First of all, the quality is amazing. They're fast drying, they have holes in them to keep you cool, and they have a flat bill which provides the ultimate shading. These things were literally meant and designed by us for life on the water. We have now made these live on our website, as well as tumblers, wine glasses, koozies, temporary tattoos, stickers, and a couple other items. So go support the journey by getting swagged up off the site. Now back to the story. So we dropped the rudder. And now we have to fare over all the fiberglass patches on the bottom of the boat. Once that dried, we sanded it smooth to match the shape of the hull. And then it was time to prime. It's prime time, baby. 
So the yard made us buy the bonding primer, and everyone recommended Primacon by Interlux. They said this stuff sticks to everything, and the bonding is really strong, so that's what we went with. So if you look real close, you can see that we're not painting all the way to the top. And the reason behind that is because you always want to do your top side paint first, and overlap your bottom paint over that. Finally, we were starting to see some progress and taking a step in the right direction. And now, it was time for the top side paint. So we're gonna break this up into two sections. We've got the prep work and the painting. And one is equally as important as the other. So let's start with the prep work. And here's what we thought it was gonna entail. Fare the boat, sand the fairing, prime the boat, sand that. So two days. And here's what it actually entailed. There's a lot more additional steps that most people don't think of before they go and decide to paint their boat. So first we sanded the entire boat with 120 grit sandpaper. And while we were doing that, we circled all of the little imperfections that we couldn't sand out so we knew where we had to fare. Before you fare the boat, you wanna make sure to wash all the dust and debris off the hull of the boat, so that way you have a good bond and no streaks in your fairing compound. So after we washed the boat, we went through and fared the entire thing, including the big ass patch on the port side of the boat. And I really have to recommend this product, Total Fair by Total Boat. I've used a couple other fairing compounds in the past and this stuff was top notch. It seemed like there was never any air bubbles in it. It mixed very consistently and spread out like butter. So once the fairing compound dried, we went over the entire boat with 150 grit sandpaper to knock down the fairing. And then we went over the whole entire boat again with 220 grit sandpaper to make sure we had a nice smooth finish for our primer coat. And for the big patch on the side, I Mr. miyagi the heck out of that thing. I was closing my eyes. Sanding it, feeling it, sanding it, feeling it, sanding it, feeling it, sanding it, feeling it. And I gotta say, I think I was pretty dang close. But we won't know if I did it right until we throw that glossy coat of paint on because any divot or imperfection will show when the light hits it just right. After that, we washed the boat again and got all the dust and debris off. And the next step was de-waxing. Basically, gel coat has wax in it, so you gotta remove that wax so your primer bonds to the hull properly. Priming is the next step. For both the paint and the primer, we decided to go with a one-part paint. It was less than half the price of a two-part paint, and after doing some research, people had some pretty good results with it. So we put on two very thin coats of primer, and now we are finally done with the prep work and almost ready to paint. Now I know this seems pretty straightforward and easy, but for those of you who want to try it yourself, this is how long it took us. Instead of two days, it took us an entire week to prep the boat. No matter how much we sanded, it never got easier and we never got faster. On average, it would take us two to three hours per side and would pretty much take an entire day just to sand the boat one time. So you can only imagine how tired we were of sanding. Sasha, let's sand. <laughs> we had now been getting our ass kicked in the yard for three and a half straight weeks with no days off. This is why we developed an addiction to crack. <laughs> <laughs> Canned crack. Jet fuel. Ugh. Gas. Ugh. Blueberry crack. And a side of blueberry crack. Woo! Let's get to it. Try to copy you. <laughs> and then I do it. <laughs> you ain't that cool. <laughs> Not the healthiest choice, but we got the boat primed. And while that was drying, we decided to. You wanna try it? You wanna try it? Install the through holes. <laughs> You're on. I'm on. So we are going with True Design through holes, which are uh, Marlon with reinforced fiberglass. <laughs> I forgot already. Yeah, it's a Marlon composite. Composite through hole. Marlon through hole. Made of Marlon. Made of Marlon. And reinforced. reinforced with fiberglass. Boom. Okay. You can see, so they'll be flush with the hull. We're gonna use a router. We're gonna use a router 
to help recess them into the hole. And once we get some some bottom paint over them, you won't even be able to tell they're there. Besides the hole. Besides the hole, you won't know that we have through holes. We're gonna go install them today. Right now. Right now. The big selling point for us on these through holes were that they are not affected by electrolysis. And we are also excited that we went with the recessed version, which reduces drag and increases speed. We're gonna be going fast in a cruising boat. Yeah. If you're not first, you're last. I doubt we'll see much difference in speed. However, when you go to resand your boat or paint the bottom, you don't have to tape around all the mushroom caps. It makes it a lot more convenient to work on. Okay, so a lot of people do not like composite through holes because they think they break easy. The reason they think they break is because they're attached right here and then there's this long stem and if you were to ever step in a hatch and kick it, they think this is going to snap and it can. But these come with these sweep collars and these mm -hmm. collars snap on and then they screw down until it's flush with the bottom of the hole. So now if you were to step on this, kick it, it can resist up to 500 pounds of pressure. So the chances of these breaking are very slim. These collars also make them compliant with the North American ABYC H-27 standards, which is what your surveyors are gonna use and what some insurance companies require. Now let's install them. All right, so after you cut your through hole, take your router and this is a chamfer bit. Chamfer, C-H-A-M. F-E-R, maybe a P-H if you get fancy with it, I don't know. Camper. It's a straight edge with a bearing on top. So it's gonna guide you around the hole you already cut for your through hole to sit in. You ready to sand? <laughs> ready to sand. Sasha thought this was a sander for the longest. Let's go. <laughs> now I know it's not. What do I press? Oh. Was that okay? <laughs> it's fine, but you see how that thing jumped? Yeah, that was scary. <laughs> yeah, because you can't let it eat too much material at first. You have to go lightly. Just barely take a little bit off and keep working your way and kind of spiral it in there, okay? Let's try it. Pretty good, right? Perfect. Look at that. Oh man, I love it when things are just perfect. And that's perfect. Thank you. Good job. Next, I'm taking over the router. This is fun. <laughs> Look, it's snowing. <laughs> Look at that. Snowing Florida. She has no idea how itchy she's gonna be tonight. Can't wait to deal with that. Merry Christmas, everybody! <laughs> my free diving breath hold. Oh. Routing out through holes. You just wiped all that fiberglass in your upper lip. We're gonna be itching so bad. Hey. That's disgusting. All right, come on. You want me to finish? No. All right. Okay, that one. flush and I'm happy happy boy happy happy so now that we got all the holes routed out it's time to glue them in we are installing our through holes today Raf is outside with the 5200 he's gonna stick the uh, through holes through these holes and I'm gonna go and screw this ready whenever you are Wiping it off with acetone, make sure now we have a nice clean surface. Ready?
That's it. Yeah, you can see we got some 5200 coming out around the edges, which is good. We repeated that process for all the remaining through holes, and then the next day we went around and cut them to size and tightened them down. Okay, so we have the through holes glued in with 5200. It's been two days, they've been drying, and all we did was hand tighten them when we started. So, now that the silicone has cured, we're gonna take a wrench and give the nut a half a turn. Think of your cured adhesive as a rubber washer. Now that it's dry, you're putting a little tension on it just to make sure it stays watertight. That feels snug. All right, those are good. These stick up so high that when the threads bottom out, this collar does not seat on the bottom of the hole. So what we have to do is cut off a half inch here, and that way when we screw it down, this collar is gonna be supported on the ground, and that's gonna make that joint really strong. After we cleaned up the cut, we wiped the area with some denatured alcohol. And then we applied some more 5200 to attach our ball valves to our through holes, making sure to wipe off the excess so none of it goes inside the ball valves when we screw it on. Right there, because I got a battery going here. Once all the fittings were connected, we heated up the hose with a heat gun so that it molded around the fitting better, and then attached it with two pipe clamps to finish the job. Beautiful. It took a few days, but we did this with every remaining through hole. So we installed the through holes and attached the plumbing lines accordingly. And now we are finally ready to sand the primer and paint the top sides. But joke's on us because we had just encountered our biggest setback yet. We want to give a big shout out to the new patrons that decided to join the family. We want to show some extra love to the upper tier patrons by giving them a plaque on board the spirit animal. Regardless of your tier, each one of you is helping us out way more than you can imagine, and these videos would cease to exist without your continued support. We also understand that being a patron isn't for everyone, so just keep in mind that sharing, commenting, liking, and subscribing are all free. Thank you guys so much for the support, and we will see you next week.